Hey guys, Sean here from the Crafty Android, and thanks for tuning in for the third video of the Castle Grayskull build. Sorry for such a long delay, it was a long, cold winter, and work's been really, really busy, so it took me quite a while to get the video done. I'm not going to waste any more time, I'm just going to jump right into it. So here I've got some real wood grain veneer with adhesive back that you can get from any hardware store. What I'm going to use this for is for the shingles and any of the wood parts that are on the castle. Here I'm just going to use a heat gun to heat up the glue on the back of the veneer so I can stick it to the roof. Now I'm carefully going to cut with my utility knife the excess off the shingles. Here's the wooden ledge that I created that's going to get glued on underneath the window. These are the two wooden supports that go underneath the cap of the castle. The wood of the veneer is a really, really light color, so I'm going to use a brown wash to darken it up a bit. And it's still a little too light, so I'm going to go darker. Still too light for my taste, so I'm going to go darker. You can always go from lighter to darker, but it's really hard to go from darker to lighter. Here I'm brushing on some Mod Podge, and I'm going to sprinkle some moss flock on it, since old wooden shingles tend to get mossy. I'm taking care not to cover the entire shingles. Typically when shingles get mossy, it starts from the ends and works its way in. Now I'm going to use a 1 to 1 solution of Mod Podge to water. I'm going to put this all over the moss flock so that way when it dries it locks it in place. And now for the jaw bridge. I used a piece of foam board and made wooden planks with wood veneer. On the back side I'll use epoxy sculpt to sculpt the teeth. Once the teeth cure, it's time to coat them with a hard protective shell using wood glue, some craft paint, and my Durham's Rock Hard Water Putty.
On the front of the door, I used epoxy sculpt to sculpt the iron crossbars. I'm also using epoxy sculpt to sculpt the door seal. I found these small hinges at my local hardware store that I plan on using so the door can actually open and close. I plan on covering the front of these with epoxy sculpt so it looks like hammered metal, but I need to sand them down first so the epoxy sculpt has something to adhere to. The wood on the door needs more grain to it, so I'm using a technical pen and drawing in the wood grains. The door seal is a bit large, but that's okay. I like it. I'm going over all the parts that are supposed to be iron with a black base coat. And then I'm going to come back and dry brush some silver on it. And then once that's done, I'm going to use a rust effect on them. If you've never dry brushed before, make sure you use a brush you're not worried about throwing away. You're going to wipe off all the excess paint till it's almost completely dry, and then rub it over your piece hitting all the high points. Here's the dry brush part prior to the rust effect. For the rust, I'm going to use some Mod Podge, and I'll mix it in with some Prime FX rust color. Now I'll dab it on in small sections, and then I'll go over and sprinkle some cinnamon on it. This is a trick I got from some scale model guys. Not only does the cinnamon add a good color and rust texture, it smells really nice. Here I'm using some watered down rust colored paint. I'm making streaks as if it was running down over time. Here's the completed and weathered door. Now it's time to mount the door in the castle. Boom. Mounted. I had to add some more rocks out front. Since He-Man has a leg kicked up, I need something for his foot to rest on. And I added some rocks in the gaps in the door. I added a back plate inside the back of the mouth. I don't know why, but I love the sound of this when it closes. In the last video, I painted some lines and little swirly dews at the bottom of the moat, and it looked really bad. So I painted over it with black and made some rocks jutting out into the moat. I've already created a box enclosure, now I'm using a two-part clear resin, plus some craft paint to pour the moat. This is a very simple one-to-one -one mix ratio, part A to part B. The fumes of this resin are very hazardous, so I have adequate ventilation, I'm wearing a respirator, and I'm making sure I use gloves. Now here I'm using a high pour method for the resin. This will reduce the air bubbles. I'm also making sure to pour the resin only on the black parts because I want the resin to flow and I don't want to pour it all over the rocks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah.